sadly. I got announced that I found another Geek Lamp. <laughs> Those who watched my series on Geek Lamp in the past know that this video won't show you a crazy accomplishment. This Geek Lamp, well, he's not called Geek Lamp, but he's called Tommy Huynia. Sorry, man. <laughs> when I saw your video, I just had to click on it because, man, uploading a video after six years of calisthenics, he didn't finally got like full Maltese, for example, full frontal, but full frontal maybe. But that's even <laughs> that makes the thing even worse. He got the front level and maybe possibly even full bench because I saw first few seconds of that video. After six years of calisthenics, I finally learned how to handstand. I know, I know that I'm not in position to talk about any of this kind of stuff because it took me six years to even not learn full front level. I got three seconds of full front level negative, let's say. But man, six years for handstand. I hope that he means under the how to handstand, for example, how to one arm handstand or how to one arm handstand flag, but then he would have named it how to handstand. If you don't know the Geek Climber reference, for Geek Climber, it took also a pretty long time to learn the most basic things. Geek Climber is a Climber, so he has the upper body strength, some strength, but pushing strength zero. In his front lever journey, he got even less far than I, I had, <laughs> which is which is really bad, man. <laughs> sorry, sorry, man, geek climber. When it comes to the handstand press, it took him 703 days to learn it. And I remember it very well that my commentary to that was why are you trying to learn something by doing a hard variation of it? Handstand press is essentially like an easier handstand push-up. You do only the half of that movement. That's like trying to learn a full plunge by learning full Maltese. A little bit different setup because my Mac is incapable of recording screen. Oh, I look, I look sexy. <laughs> it looks like I have earring. <laughs> I know that I said in my first video in this comeback that you shouldn't really like care about the speed of progress, but I didn't mean by that that you should like learn handstand after 20 years. <laughs> so after six years of doing any stacks, Right away, I, I have to stop it. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Sorry, guys, for this interface of the iPhone. He can do full front level. Perfect. Full front level. I don't know for how many seconds. Hence, then you can learn. With my knowledge I have right now, or if I would like spend a few minutes, maybe hours at the beginning of my journey looking for the knowledge, I would get it in a matter of like four or five months. Oh, my new different skills. I finally Straight came back playing. to one of the first movements that you should actually learn at the start of the journey, and here we got the, handstand. the handstand. The main reason why I didn't focus on the handstand first is because I was scared of falling. Mm -hmm. I talked about this in my previous video. The first step in learning handstand is to get rid of this fear. If you wouldn't do this step, you would somehow, for example, learn it, but you would be so scared to try it on, for example, on higher pallets, then P bars, and then even on a high bar. So getting rid of the fear is the most important part. The first part you gotta like pick away the off. And during my six years of booking out, I've experienced different kinds of injuries. So the fear oh, is still in there every time I try to do risky movements. However, if you're fully committed to calisthenics and bodyweight training, the handstand is one of the must learn skills since it will build your wrist strength, improve your body control, and the handstand can also combine with many different exercises to help you make progress faster. So in today's video, I will share with you guys how I surpassed my fear and be able to unlock the handstand to three steps. And I've only been able to unlock it and not master it yet. So my technique <laughs> the typical plunge handstand. My tutorial, my I will say it right now. Learn how to uh, get rid of the fear, you know, by learning how to safely twist your body when you are falling over you. You will rotate your body by 180 degrees or something around that. Basically, you will end up facing the opposite way. Then you won't go right away try to kick up into a handstand on the floor on, on parallels. That's a nonsense. How you wanna learn handstand? Second exercise when you can't even do the kick up. First exercise or even if you would master kick up, you are kicking up into some something you have not really mastered yet. So you should find the closest wall that you have and learn firstly how to balance the handstand. Get into the handstand with both legs straight and then you will slowly move one leg into the air and then you will try to balance it while the other leg will join the first one. Really use the fingers, bend them and really push with them, release, push. It's constant work, you cannot just be in the handstand and do nothing. Maybe for a split a second, but then you will fall either way. And when you will master this for a few seconds, at least like over 10 seconds, I'd say, 
you can now go and learn the handstand kick up because that's almost like another exercise at this point you are actually kicking up into something you can balance and you understand the balance and you won't just kick up if you will successfully kick up into a handstand it won't be just a matter of luck you now know how to control the movement if you, i hope you understand the handstand hold or the punch front lever is called a static movement meaning that you will try to maintain your body in the same position for as long as you can during a set of training. I just can't help it, but he's one of those guys that can do full Maltese, but barely holds a full front lever, you know? I don't understand it. Like, I always thought that a handstand, holding a handstand for like 30 seconds, 40 seconds, is like almost a prerequisite to starting learning a planche, for example. Or then, of course, handstand push-ups and all that kind of stuff. How you can skip handstand and just learn right away planche, I, I don't know. Also, you don't need a lot of strength to hold a handstand for a few seconds. You know, we all saw those kids trying on a playground handstand and they can hold it for a few seconds. But the bad part of not having the strength is that uh, the balance will be... You will have a less range of motion you can balance it. The one-arm handstand. With the strength, you can go into one-arm handstand flag to balance it. You can bend your arm, you can... You you are not fixed it just on balancing with your wrists. Ways to do a static exercise faster is to do it as much as you can because by only allowing your body to get into that specific position. Like yeah, do it as much as possible as you can, but that doesn't mean to just every day randomly trying to kick up into that. That's the problem. When you are learning the handstand, as I said, forget about random kick ups. This way your progress will be really slow because you are not spending in that position. You are spending that zero, zero point zero zero seconds most of the time at the beginning. To so get into that specific position, you know, this is it will slowly become more and more used to it mm, and you will better. be able to unlock the movement. And the first step that I to unlock the handstand is to learn mm -hmm. how to fall. Okay, okay. That's when training for the handstand, you can't avoid the fact that you will fall a lot. So if you just learn how to fall correctly, you again. will feel much more <laughs> comfortable when doing the exercise and also reduce the chance of getting injured. To learn this technique, you will first have to get yourself into the handstand position. And also try to do this step not at home, like when you have all of those things around you. I know that there is a plenty of space, but if you are tall, for example, I would firstly train it outdoors. <laughs> it's to kick up with as much yeah, power as you can. When you reach this point, you would either be able to hold it right away, or your body will lean forward, causing you to lose balance and fall. Yeah, some, something like that. So sure. when you know that you are about to fall, you will twist your body to your right or left to end up in this position. Just basically don't freeze and do something, <laughs> you know, you don't want, even if you have the flexibility to do bridge, no one jumps down to bridge. If you will freeze, you will fall on your head and <laughs> you will die. This is probably the safest way to fall during a handstand training. And I could also suggest you to practice it in a program or a park. Possibly I'd say that at, at the point that you can do handstand for like 20 seconds on the ground and you know how to fall, the technique of falling from the handstand is, the, is essentially the same. You just gotta do it slower the higher you are. If, I, if, I'm, if you do it fast, you will end up on your back. The second step, which could be getting used to holding the handstand. No? The movement that I focus on the most was the wall handstand hold. And there will be three mm -hmm. exercises that you should do. In my opinion, I wouldn't even go for the chest to wall handstand. This is a better variation. You will put the parallel or the hands a little bit further away from the wall. Both legs straight, one leg in the air and the other one will try to join it and you will use your fingers <laughs> and try to balance it. In my eyes, at this point, the balance is super simple. You, you will just either push with your fingers or your palms, you know, or with nothing. But that means only like a half a second before you will start again falling forward. And you constantly switch between pushing fingers and palms, maybe bending elbows if you are falling a little bit more. The kick up or handstand, in which you will use the wall as an assist the object to hold the handstand as long as possible. Usually, there are two ways to do this exercise. First is the usual way, and second is the reverse way. Mm. Personally, I believe that both ways will be great to support you become more used to The second way on the or the right is not really necessary, I'd say. The reverse way, your body will be in a straight line. Also, just by doing, just by holding the handstand against the wall and not really trying to learn the balance, you will just get the strength. Well, that's obvious, then you don't have to tell us. You don't need that much of a strength because handstand is just like you are holding your whole weight. The weight is nice and stacked, that's why the handstand is so easy. And also, don't forget to really push tall. Don't be like this in the handstand, really trying to push tall. The next exercise is to find your balance by using your fingers and hands. I would recommend you to yeah, position yeah, yeah. your fingers like this rather than flat on the floor. 
since it will be a lot easier to focus on your fingers once you have gotten used to the first two movements, you will come to the third and final exercise of this step, and it is going to be finding your perfect spot. To find this spot, you will still use the wall as a support, then continue to do the kick up, but now you will use your hands and fingers to control your body before your feet could touch the wall. Did this ranger think that all of this stuff he understood after six years? By the way, rip white walls. <laughs> By the way, when we are talking about destroying white walls, you can do all of this stuff at Kaisteng's parks. Because you got those uh, pillars, let's say, in which those bars are embedded. You can kick up into a handstand against the pillar, put one leg on the pillar or maybe even both if there will be space for it and do the same thing. You, just, you don't have to just do it uh, at home. He's not really pushing tall, he's still in this angle instead of this one and doing handstand his way is a lot harder you know you are essentially holding it almost like a branch lean i believe that if i just keep doing it as much as i can and slowly fix my form i will be able to master the handstand hold i will give you guys an update once i could comfortably do it wow wow wow, wow. what he said it's, it's a clickbait it's a clickbait. <laughs> it's not after six years of Christ next I finally learned how to hold a handstand. Well, he has the knowledge, so it's a partial clickbait, but he cannot really hold it when... What update? I thought that these are old clips. As I said here already, Tommy, a uh, quick tip for you, really try to push tall, go against the wall again, <laughs> again. Don't do this. You need to push tall. And also a quick tip. It's an optional thing to do when you are kicking up into the handstand. It can be applied to both pellets and ground. You can bend your arms so you don't have to kick up that hard. You will need a little bit more strength to really hold yourself in the bent arm position. I'm not talking about this, but this way you will catch your balance and then lock out. You can do full punch, but not a handstand hold. <laughs> to that, I want to quickly add another video of a guy trying to learn handstand again the wrong way. Uh, I hope I will find it. I can't. Urva and fucking shorts everywhere. YouTube was overflown by shorts. Does anybody still do normal videos? <laughs> All right, I found it. He's called Jamie Hill. Of course, it is normal to like, if you will decide to learn something, you will just try it and then watch a couple of tutorials. But a lot of people, I believe, just keep trying and trying without having any knowledge about, without searching for knowledge. So here we got a typical American house. <laughs> uh, this is the worst way how to kick up into the handstand. From standing position, randomly dropping, having a lot of speed. And you will, you will, you will maybe... You will maybe hold it like this for a few seconds, few times maybe, but you are not essentially learning anything from it. Because the success ratio is still not anywhere close to 90% at least. You are not spending any seconds in it. You see, he will, he will just destroy his TV <laughs> this way. That wasn't definitely a mouth noise. <laughs> Even look at his hands. Look at his hands when he does the handstand, he's not bending his fingers. His form is also terrible, of course, he's a beginner, I, I know it, I know it, but he's not supposed to do this. What I've researched is like, you kind of want to like learn a skill move and then do the actual workout. So we're going to try handstands and then we're going to get to handstands the against the wall. Workout. Uh, first things first, I want to warm my wrist. Uh, good idea. Uh, not against the wall. Here he even doesn't have a space where he could place his feet. But he, but he can at least like exit the move safely if he's falling over. But these random attempts. Mm -mm. All right, our first workout is we're gonna do plank push-ups. Uh, we're gonna do three sets. Plank push-ups. Each of them. Before this video continues, just warning you, my form is absolutely terrible. Don't copy it whatsoever again why this guy which got into calisthenics a couple of days ago before this video you know this is like a year old video didn't do any research like, do the people think that i'm not that weak to do a research i don't have to <laughs> this is essentially just like doing a bad form normal push-ups and these are not pike push-ups and that's another thing i saw many times on instagram pike push-up like variation that are strength wise in between push-up normal and pike push-up like build up a little bit more strength with normal push-up and then go straight into the pike push-up i don't know why people keep creating every single day another and another exercise that are unnecessary not useless but unnecessary there's no point of doing three bad form pike push-ups this is still like just bad form normal push-ups save but 
These were plank push-ups. I only did one set of them because they were hurting. Why he does spike push-ups when he cannot even do normal push-ups if he's not doing right here a uh, pseudo plank push-ups? So another question: Why he's doing pseudo pseudo plank push-ups when he cannot even do pike push-ups? I believe that pike push-ups are like before pseudo plank push-ups. Alright, now we're just doing normal push-ups. We didn't end up doing the second and third set of plank push-ups because my wrist was starting to hurt because you, you can't stress your wrist a lot. You can turn them out at a bit 45 degrees so so re relieve the pressure. No, probably. Quick tip. They don't, then that's good. Uh, he's, he's a little bit flattening elbows, elbows. 45 degrees or close to a body. But I, it's doing a ton of push-ups. Don't tell me he's going to put on him a weight vest. Wait, weighted plank or what? Uh, weighted, no, 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 no. <laughs> This is a definition of ego lifting. Well, <laughs> why he does weighted push up when he cannot even do normal push up with perfect form? This is a road to injury. <laughs> another, another. <sighs> Explain me the order of those exercises. Shouldn't it be like handstand tries, handstand against the wall, let's say? Then either pike push ups, good form, or weighted push ups, and then normal push ups. Oh my god. And Olex, he's so but he's a true Kai Stanks athlete. Skips like workouts. That's how it should be. <laughs> All right. Hope you guys took something from it, took some tips if you are on your journeys to learn handstand. If you liked it, you can also check out this one with you the things you will like. Also, I will see you there if you click on it. So click. <laughs>